my practice. Okay. Uh, because of some of the things I'm going to mention, I have to put this disclaimer out there. I am not representing the United States Parachute Association in any capacity. I'm here representing as an individual. I happen to be a USPA member and certified examiner and instructor. Of that, I've been working, I had the pleasure of working with Carl initially whenever I was uh, working in Charleston. Uh, I was a skydive instructor, tandem instructor, and AFF instructor uh, from 2014 to 2016. Very involved. Uh, I love that sport, love sharing it, and I got to say, I'm very selective as to where I work because they have to abide by the safety rules. So one of the things that Carl mentioned to me that bothered me because I was so involved in their training program, uh, not only of students, but also instructors. I have certified three of their instructors that work on their staff and they adhere to, and you can speak with them, one of them just spoke, that uh, they had to meet a high standard in order to earn that credential. So the statement that was made was that they were concerned that someone would get hurt or killed because they were bunking therapy for one of these. Well, I can assure you that there are zero paratroop for wannabes at that location. There are a lot of individuals that want to be a skydiver, and there's a huge difference. So they have to adhere to specific regulations. And to be a uh, drop zone that is a USPA affiliated drop zone, they have to sign a pledge. And they have to pledge that they will follow the basic safety requirements and the rules and policies adhere to adhere to those that is uh, outlined in the Skydivers Information Manual, which is a very very structured training program and a very very structured credentialing program for the instructors. So they have to meet very high standards before they can teach those individuals. And just to give you some statistics as far as skydiving, the safety of skydiving, because one of the things that I tell my passengers, the most dangerous part of your skydive was basically the drive over there. You were in more danger of driving down the road and parking out in that parking lot than what you're about to experience going up to 10,000 feet and jumping out of a not so perfectly good airplane. And I say not, there is no such thing as a perfectly good airplane. So, it, in working as an instructor and sharing that, it's just, indescribable of what it is that we are sharing. We are, we're having an individual that has a fear of heights. They are entrusting their life to a complete stranger. They've never met me before. They don't know how many jumps I have. I tease them a little bit saying, whenever they ask me how many jumps, it's like, you mean including today? But it's about getting them comfortable and experiencing that fear and walking with them over that threshold whenever they exit that plane. I have yet to land with anybody that didn't have a huge smile on their face and was ready to go back up again. So what would you be doing? You're going to be, you're going to be removing that experience that's available to this community. And there's a lot of individuals that want to experience it down in Marshall. There is a lot of individuals within this community. So that indirect revenue that they talk about, absolutely. That's how you're getting your money. But if you disband this airport authority, it states. It automatically negates the lease. And then it automatically negates the ability to negotiate a lease with an individual who has put his blood, sweat, and tears within making that a drop zone, making that an airport, making that a restaurant, making that a campground, making that a family-oriented entity for its local community. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, next we have Genevieve Addy. Hi there. I'm just here as a private citizen. I've been coming up here to West Virginia for seven months. I drive five hours every week here five hours back because my child lives in North Carolina. I've experienced my first jump here, my second jump with Mike, and what I've observed here is just such an amazing community for the families that come here, the 
to the restaurant, families that live at the RV, the festivals they have, the, the, the walks they have at, at Halloween. It is something wholesome that, uh, as I'm hearing here, no one else is getting. And you're taking that away from not only that airport and the same right here, but you're taking it away from a huge community, huge cities that surround that community, people that want to jump. You're going to lose jumpers. There is nowhere else to jump in West Virginia. I drive here from North Carolina. I drive back to North Carolina. I come back every single week. This is what this place is. And I, and I really hope you listen to everyone here. Okay. Thank you. Next we have Isaiah Smith. Ladies and gentlemen of the County Commission, you have to excuse my hobble hair. Uh, my name is Isaiah Smith. I'm a uh, flight instructor. Someone who's been in aviation since I was 10 years old. I'm now 27. Uh, I, Robert Newland has been a family to me. I came to this airport um, not all that long ago, within about two years span, and uh, the airport. The people there have just been an absolute family. I flight instructed out of that airport in the 1940s Piper Cub. I've been one of a handful of tail drag instructors in the whole state that people can't find. And flight instruction, especially this time of year with COVID, has gone up exponentially. And again, with Marshall coming in and the influx of students, they need real world experience that only Robert Newland can provide with soft field. The airport, as you've heard many people say, and I don't have to reiterate, is a huge plus for the community. And I urge you to strongly reconsider what you're thinking of doing because it would be a huge negative for everyone involved and it would also hurt the board and the public trust that you should be worried about within your community. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? We have come to the end of the list, both front and back. Yes, sir. Mm, hello. John Mance. Commissioners, thank you for providing this forum. Uh, it's been very informative. Natalie from WOWK asked me some questions a little while ago. And, you know, I've, I've served two years in, in uh, the West Virginia House of Delegates, and we have a few delegates here, but we're also here, and former delegates, but we're also here as private citizens, business owners, friends. Um, it's been very interesting to, to listen to the, the people talking about the Air Park, and as many people that we have come there uh, skydive their planes and to know that it's our only grass field that we have in West Virginia. You know a lot of people have been a little upset that Marshall has put their aviation school in Charleston and not in Huntington. Marshall is is our community and we have a lot of history with Marshall. You know part of the downside if, if we do away with the airfield is now we're not bringing that aviation school into Cabell County and back home to practice their grass landings and to do some things that they need to do to get their aviation or their, their pilot's license and what they need to do. When we get to the restaurant part of it, of course, that's what I've done all my life. Uh, I love going to Flying Cafe. My father lives in Florida now. And when you live in South Florida, you used to seafood. Well, we've been over there in the five months he's been here staying with us. I would say 15, 20 times. Um, so we enjoy the food, we enjoy the service. Another thing that you see about that is the RV park. It is amazing. That is packed all the time. So he and I drove through one time, and you see the license plates on the RVs that are from different states. So it, it's very encouraging, and it's different. And I know as a, as a restaurant in Huntington on Fifth Avenue, I'm sure we benefit from people coming in to Newland Air Park. You know, I, I developed the uh, West Virginia Hot Dog Festival and founded that. Carl's doing festivals and so forth and fundraisers and giving back to our community. I think it's extremely important that, that we do have transparency, as it is in the legislature that we have transparency and, and honesty. That's very important to me, um, as I know it is to a lot of people in this room. And uh, I know the commission will do the right thing what, now that you've, you've heard a lot of information and stories and how important this field is to our area in Cabell County. And I feel and I trust that, that you all will make a good decision. And uh, I think and I know that you all will involve all, all the parties and, and work with Carl uh, Bailey and, and get something worked out. But uh, 
it, it's been very educational for me to be here today uh, and, and to see a lot of friends and to introduce myself and be introduced to a lot of people that I haven't known or met. But uh, again, thank you for this forum and allowing us to be here and allowing us to gather information and understand a little bit more about what's going on. I do represent the 16th district and the Newland Airport and the Flying Cafe is in a district I represent. So that's important to me. Jobs, tourism. Our governor is big on tourism right now. Let's bring tourism into Huntington, into Cabell County. Let's not push it out. Thank you all for your time. And uh, you all have a great day. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you. I just uh, thanks to the commission for, for having us in here today. I've known Carl Bailey for several years now, and I've watched, frankly, uh, what I've seen a lot of business owners do, but, but even more so than Carl, to put in his blood, sweat, and tears at heart. And I think, you know, to see people show up today and, and, and pour their hearts out kind of shows you that all is not in vain, my friend, uh, for everything we've done. You know, we have a lot of legislative experience in this room, and one of the things that I've learned from several of you up there is, you know, we're going to have to grow our way out of the problems we have here in Cabot County. Uh, and that means economic development. And that's twofold. That's not only bringing in new businesses, and that's important, but it's also how we treat the businesses that are here. Because not only are other businesses here, and, and many of us here have businesses and, and work in businesses, and we're watching, but also other people are outside watching. And I think Dr. Royce makes comments that you, know, you can't rely on a deal. You know, I mean, I learned about a deal on the playground at uh, Pea Ridge Elementary, and and you're only as good as your word. And if you make a deal with a man for 30 years or a 10 year or 10 minutes, you've got to keep that deal. Um, otherwise, he goes forth, he keeps the deal, he puts his blood, sweat, tears, money, life's minutes into the deal, and then uh, if it's taken away, that's that's not quite right. And so I don't think that's what you intend to do. I know all of you, and I know how much you believe in economic development, and I believe everyone here believes in keeping the words. So I hope you'll do that. I appreciate the opportunity to speak, and, and I appreciate the opportunity to, to be here with my friend and brother, Carl. Anybody else want to speak?